Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you The Great Gildersleeve, Una Merkel, and Beulah Bondi in The Show Off. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, Fibber McGee and Molly introduced a new character into their show called Gildersleeve. I'm sure no one could have foreseen the fantastic success story to which we add another chapter tonight. Mr. Gildersleeve made a great hit with Fibber and Molly's audience and soon had a radio program of his own. Then came a series of pictures at RKO. And tonight, we've cast him in one of the great comedy hits of the American theater, it's George Kelly's famous play, The Show-Off. And to show off the great Gildersleeve in a proper setting, we've co-starred him with Una Merkel and Beulah Bondi. You'll find another name on Gildersleeve's birth certificate, Harold Perry, to be exact. But Mr. Perry has been swallowed up by Mr. Gildersleeve to the great enjoyment of the American people. In The Show-Off, he plays Aubrey Piper, a gentleman with a talent for getting into trouble. Witness the case of his brother-in-law's invention, which you'll hear more about in just a moment. Some inventors are remembered by everyone. The names of others are lost in the fog of time. The airplane, the electric light, the wireless, any school child knows who was responsible for them. But nobody knows who invented the wheel or who invented soap. Yet someone did invent soap, Hundreds of years before it reached the level of perfection that's called Lux Toilet Soap. I leave it to you. How many modern inventions would you give up before you do without soap? In research for a picture about Cleopatra, which I made a few years ago, I discovered that she had several ladies in waiting whose job it was to help her keep beautiful. But all the wealth and power of the ancient queen of Egypt didn't serve her half as well as the queen of any American home is served by a cake of Lux toilet soap. But now the show goes on with the show off. And here's the first act, starring the great Gildersleeve as Aubrey Piper, Una Merkel as Amy, and Beulah Bondi as Mrs. Fisher. It's 8 o'clock on a Wednesday evening. And Amy Fisher is a flutter with excitement. Eight o'clock Wednesday is a big moment in Amy's life. For at ten after, a certain party will ring the doorbell of the little frame house near Philadelphia. Hurriedly, she dabs a powder puff at her nose. And then, hearing the front door open, she rushes to the head of the stairs. Mama? Mama, was that the door? Yes, it was. It was your sister. Oh. Mama, when the bell rings, let me answer it. Hello, Clara. How's Frank? All right. Mama, did you see my blue bar pin? It was in my drawer. Well, look in the drawer. I haven't seen it. What's all the excitement, Mama? Wednesday night. Oh. Is that fellow still coming here? Oh, right on the dot, such as he is. It looks like a steady thing, Clara. You never in your life heard anybody talk so much. I don't know how Amy stands him. Your pop can hardly stay in the room where he is. Well, doesn't she take him into the parlor? She does, yes, but she might just as well leave him out here, because he's not in there five minutes till he's out here in the kitchen again talking about politics. <laughs> You'd think he knew something about it. And the investment business, he's always talking about that, too. That's where he works, you know, the Billings Investment Company. He says he's head of the sales department. But I says to your brother, Joe, I says, <laughs> I don't know how he can be head of anything from the talk of him. Joe says he's a nut, (laughs) but you don't dare say anything to Amy about him. Oh, no, she thinks he's heaven's gift to the Fisher family. And for all she knows about him, he could be a tramp in the park instead of with the Billings Company. Well, that's where he works, though, Mom. How do you know? Well, Frank knows him. You're Frank? Uh Uh-huh. He says he eats his lunch at the same place there at 15th and Arch. And does he say he knows him? Why, sure. He says he's seen him around there for a long time. Frank calls him Carnation Charlie. 
He says he's always got a big carnation in his buttonhole and carries a cane. That's the one. He's always got it on when he comes here, too. I believe in my heart, Clara. That's what's turned your sister's head. Did Frank say what his name was? Aubrey Piper, I think. That's it. Aubrey Piper. (laughs) Sounds more like a place than a man's name. What does he do at Billings? He's a clerk. A clerk. I knew it. Head of the sales department. (laughs) Hello, Clara. Oh, hello, Pop. Well, has that nut arrived yet? Not yet, but he will. I hope to heaven he stays in the parlor tonight. I want to read my paper. And if he slaps me on the back once more, I'll kill him. That laugh of his. <laughs> Enough to drive a man crazy. What's that? Must be Joe. He's down the cellar trying to fix the radio. Joe? Is that you? Yeah. Give me a hand with the set, will you, Pop? Oh, I thought you was going to keep it downstairs. There isn't enough light. Okay, thanks, Pop. Well, has that screwball come in yet? <laughs> well, he certainly is a big hit with his family. Laughing Louie. He's a first-class pest, that guy. Every time I'm working on something, he sticks his nose in it. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know that formula I've been working on to prevent rust? He got his nose into that the other night, too. Next time he does it, he's going to get socked. Oh, there he is now. Amy? Put out the light in here and shut the door, Maybe You'll think we've gone out. Well, I've got to go. Well, go out the back door if you don't want to be here all night. Amy! Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Pop. Goodbye. Be quiet now. If he hears a voice in here, he'll pop in here like a jumping jack. Just a minute. Aubrey. Hello, Aubrey. Greetings on you, little girl. How's every little thing? Hitting on all three? (laughs) (laughs) Come in, Aubrey. Right on the job, Amy. Ten minutes past on the dot. The pride of old West Philly never misses, no, sir. I'll take your hat, Aubrey. Anything to please the ladies. Here you are. And the boy rode off with many thanks and many a backward bow. Oh, Oh, come on in the parlor, Aubrey. Uh, One second, little gal. One little favor. Never again will I trouble the bell of old North Philly. How about a drink of the old aqua pura, huh? That's water to me. <laughs> of course, Aubrey. I'll be right back. Make yourself comfortable. Don't you worry about me, little girl. Amy, Amy, shut that door. Well, what's the matter, Mom? I just want to get a drink of water for Aubrey. Listen, Amy, I don't want that fellow popping in here. Oh, good evening, ladies and gents. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Stay right where you are, folks. Right where you are. Going right out on the next train. How are you, little mother? Evening, Pop. Hi, Joe. Oh. Hello. Yeah. Amy, step on the gas with the old Aquapura. Man's got to have a drink. How about it, Pop? You'll stay with me on that, eh, Pop? Listen, I don't like to be slapped on the back. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I want to tell you this is a very pretty little picture of domestic felicity. Father reading, mother knitting, and little old Joe Edison Fisher there working 18 hours a day to make the rich man richer and the poor man poorer. What about it, Popcorn? Am I right or raving? Will you let me alone and keep your hands to yourself? I never saw such a pest in my life. Well, what's the matter with Popsy Wopsy? Uh, little off his feed, eh, Mother Fisher? Mm. Here's your water, Aubrey. Ah, uh, thank you, my dear. Blushing as she gave it, looking down at her feet so bare and her tattered gown. Oh. <laughs> yes. How's that, Mother Fisher? Can't beat that little old Willie Shakespeare, now can you? No, sir, I'd like to tell the brothers that that little old Shakespeare party shook a wicked spear. <laughs> yes. Well, here's laughter, ladies. And Mr. Marconi, my best regards to you. Ah, very nice indeed. And a sweeter draught from a fairer hand was never quaffed. Oh, you. (laughs) Well, Mr. Joseph, what are you doing? What are you doing, Joseph? I am fixing something. Oh, at it again, eh? The young inventor himself. Well, Mr. Joseph, I want to tell you you're wasting your time. When you're all through, they'll offer you 20 cents for it and sell it for 20 million, take it or leave it, sign on the dotted line. Yes, sir. That's exactly what they did to little old yours truly here. Twenty Lincoln anacondas for a formula that would have solved the greatest problem before the industrial chemical world today. What kind of a formula? Why, a formula to prevent the rusting of iron and steel. A solution of vanadium and manganese to be added to the metal in its molten state instead of applied externally. Where did you hear that? Yeah, hear what, my boy? About a rust preventative using vanadium and manganese. Little idea of my own. Yeah, You heard it right here in this room. I was talking about it last Sunday. Oh, you thought of it too, eh? (laughs) Well, just goes to show you, Joe. Great minds running the same... Oh, shut up. You give me a swift pain. I love that boy. 
Yes, Mother Fisher, that little boy of yours has got some great ideas. I was speaking to some of the men who work under me just the other day, Mother. I said, gentlemen, the inventive genius in this country is... Where are you going, Mother? I got a touch of the same pain. Good night. Must be an epidemic around here. Oh, um, uh, Aubrey, Aubrey, let's go in the parlor, shall we? Yeah. You know, Amy, sometimes I get a funny feeling that your folks don't like me. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep, so beware, be. A little high, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yes, Mother, do you want something? I just wanted to tell you that it's nearly 12 o'clock. We're all going to bed around here. Uh, I was just about to take my reluctant leave, little Mother. Well, I don't want to hurry you. Not at all, not at all. In fact, the recent outburst was in the nature of a farewell concert. A little old song at twilight, you know, Mother Fisher, to soothe the savage beast. Yeah. Come on, Aubrey. I'll walk to the gate with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's a beautiful night, all right. Oh, isn't it? Look at that moon up there, Amy. Mm. Is that a moon or is that a moon? I say it's a moon. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know, it's times like this when a man gets to thinking, Amy. Does he, Aubrey? Yes, sir. That old moon up there makes you think a lot of things. <laughs> A man's got to be pretty careful. Oh. But when a man's knocked around the world like I have, a man gets pretty wise. When a man meets the right girl, a man knows he's met the right girl. Do you follow me? I, I think so, Aubrey. Amy, you think a married couple can be happy on $100 a week? Oh, Aubrey, yes, I do. Be nice if they had it, too. <laughs> Aubrey, uh, is that is that how much you uh... well, more or less, more or less. Right now, it's a little less. <laughs> but I'm thinking of putting over a deal, Amy, uh, just between us two, you know. I don't think it makes any difference how much a man makes. I think when a girl cares for a man, uh, loves a man, that's all that counts. The only important thing in the world, or should be, even if he doesn't have a dime, don't you? Well, I got two nickels. <laughs> no, no. I mean, don't you think? Don't you think about love? Oh, sure. Ever since I was 14, Amy. Yes, sir. It's a little old Cupid dart that counts. And after all, you can't buy happiness, can you? Definitely not, so they say. Well? Well? Uh, well, uh, Amy, what do you think, huh? About, you mean about... Yeah, what do you say? Is it a go? Say yes, Amy. Say you'll pool your coffee ration with me. Aubrey, you mean will I marry you? That's the general thought I'm trying to convey. Oh, Aubrey, yes, I will, Aubrey, any time you say. Uh, Amy, Amy Piper. Oh. I'm not going to let you do it. I won't stand for it. Oh, Mama, stop it. I'm going to marry him, and that's all there is to it. But you don't even know him. You don't know what he does or how much he makes or anything about him. I don't have to. I know I like him, and that's enough. All right. But remember this, Amy. Be sure that he keeps you, and you keep him. And don't be coming around here for your pup to keep you. Mama, don't make me laugh. Aubrey's got a wonderful position. He makes plenty of money. Who says so? I just know from the way he talks. He makes at least $100 a week. <laughs> uh, uh. Who ever heard of a clerk making a hundred a week? A clerk? Where did you hear that? From Frank Hyland. What does Frank Hyland know about it? He knows Aubrey Piper. And Frank says he's a clerk down there just like five million others. Oh, that just shows how much he knows about it. Aubrey told me he makes a hundred dollars a week. And what's more, he's going to swing a great big deal pretty soon. <laughs> the only thing he'll ever swing is that cane he carries. Amy, dear... I'm warning you once and for all. Oh, Mama, why don't you let me make my own life? You took who you wanted, didn't you? And Clara took the man she wanted. Well, I'm going to take what I want, and I want Aubrey Piper. Well, you 
like a raise, eh, Piper? Well, that's the general idea I was trying to convey, Mr. Williams. What for? Well, the way I figured is this. A man's going to get married. Well, when a man gets married, he's got to have enough to support a wife, right? Right. And I figure about 100 a week, maybe a little more. How much do you make now, Piper? 35. <laughs> Not very much, Mr. Williams. No, it isn't. But this investment business isn't what it used to be either. Yes, sir, but... 35 is all you're worth, Piper. But, Mr. Williams... From what I've seen of your ability, it's more than you're worth. Yes, sir. Now, I'm... would you like 35 or nothing at all? No, sir. What I... makes you think you're entitled to a raise? Well, I... You don't have to get married, do you? No, sir. Then put it off for a while. Yes, sir, but I... That's all, Piper. That's all. Goodbye. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Hey, Piper. Yes, sir. Yeah. Huh? Look, how did it go? Where did you get the race? Oh, the race. Oh, yes. We talked it over, the boss and I. He, uh, he's going to sleep on it. I hope he has nightmares. Oh, gee, pretty lucky, Piper. Well, there's nothing to it if you got the right approach, Fred. I got in a good word for you, too. Yeah? Oh, gee, thanks. Well, I'll go to lunch now. Got to feed the old furnace, you know. See you around, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Aubrey. What'll it be? Hi, Sam. I'll have a ham on rye and a chocolate frosting. And don't spare the ice cream, Sam. Two scoops? Oh, two scoops, sure. What do I care? That's a nickel extra, Aubrey. Slap it in there, Sam. You know Piper, the old sport himself. <laughs> sure. One ham on, one frosted. Scoop it double. Aubrey. Aubrey. Amy, what are you doing way down here? Aubrey, I have to speak to you. Say, I'm glad you came, Amy. You know that deal I was talking about? Well, it didn't go through, honey. I mean... Aubrey, uh, listen. So I was just thinking maybe if we could postpone getting married... Aubrey, I've got to tell you, darling, it's awfully important. I've done it, Aubrey. Huh? Done what? I've done it. I've left home. You left... Oh. Oh, I, I just had to. I couldn't stand it anymore, and I just told Mama. I said, I'm leaving, Mama, and that's that. You told Mama, huh? Oh. Well, I was just going to tell you, Amy, that deal, I mean, uh, where are you going to live? I don't know. I haven't even thought about it. I burned my bridges, Aubrey. You burned mine, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I I guess we better get married pretty soon then, huh? Oh, Aubrey, do you suppose we could? Oh, sure. You just leave everything to me. Oh, Aubrey, that'd be wonderful. And it doesn't really make any difference, does it? I mean, we were going to be married anyway, and, well, you make so much money and all, and, oh, Aubrey, tell me it's all right. Oh, it's fine, Amy, it's fine. Uh, just a minute. Hey, uh, Samuel, Samuel. Yeah? Cancel that extra scoop, will you? Act Two of The Show Off, starring the great Gildersleeve as Aubrey Piper, Beulah Bondi as Mrs. Fisher, and Una Merkel as Amy. Six months have passed, and the romance of Amy and Aubrey has blossomed into marriage. Amy is too proud to admit it to her family, but she has discovered, as wives sometimes do, that her mate is more talk than action. He's not the head of his department, nor does he earn the expected $100 per week. And now, in the Piper kitchenette, the financial question has again reared its ugly head. Bills, bills, bills. Aubrey, what are we going to do? How's the coffee coming along, Amy? Boy can't be late to work, you know. Aubrey, listen to me. Sure, what's on your mind? Aubrey, we've just got to get some money. We can't go on like this any longer. Why not? We've been getting along fine. Have we? Look at this. We owe $30 to the butcher, 23 to the grocer, 8 10 to the milkman, and the janitor was here about the rent again. I'll speak to him on the way out. On your way out is right. He's going to throw us out Friday. You mean he's threatened us? Why, he can't get away with that. I'll break the lease. That's what I'll do. Uh, how about a piece of toast, honey? Aubrey, he can get away with it. We've got to pay up or get out. All right, we'll get out. I never liked this place anyway. The bathtub gurgles. <laughs> Have you got any peanut butter? Aubrey, how can I make you understand? Listen, honey, do me a favor, will you? Forget about it. Everything's going to be fine. Is it? How? You just keep your eye on the boy from West Philly, that's all. Now, I didn't want to mention this, but I'm working on a deal right now that'll put us right up there on top. Where's the jelly? What kind of a deal, Aubrey? Never mind. You'll see. But I want to know. Well, it's a little idea I've had in the back of my head for a long time. What idea? It's pretty technical, Amy. Aubrey, tell me. What is it? Well, 
It's a rust preventative. A combination of magnesium and vanadium added... Oh, Aubrey, that's Joe's idea. That's the thing he's been working on for years. Oh, beat me to it, eh? Well, the more power to him. Oh, Aubrey. <laughs> Good evening to you, one and all. Hello, Mother Fisher. Oh, hello. It's you, is it? What's the good word, Mother? Been siphoning out any gas tanks lately? <laughs> Where's Amy? Is she here? No, ain't she home? No, I just came by there. Well, she ain't been here today. Yeah, she was saying this morning she thought she'd go out and look for a house today. I suppose she hasn't got back yet. I wanted to take her to the movies. I got the loan to Harry Albright's car. Did you say she was out looking for a house? Yeah, we got to get out of that place we're in. The Acme machine people have bought the whole block. They're going to put up a new factory there. How soon do you have to get out? Friday. I mean, as soon as we can find another place. Well, I'm afraid you won't find it so easy to get a place as reasonable as that again in a hurry. I don't want a place as reasonable as that. I want a real home, Mamma Mia. Something with ground around it. Where I can do a bit of tennis in the evening. Well, if you do, you'll pay for it. That's exactly what I expect to do, Mother Fisher. Uh, not giving you a short answer, of course. That's exactly what I expect to do. And no more of the old first-of-the-month business for this growing boy. He's all washed up, signed on the dotted line. I'm going to buy, Mother. Buy? Buy what? A house, Mother Fisher. A real little home. You ought to go out along the boulevard some Sunday. Some fine little buys out there. Hmm. Well, there's no danger of your going out along the boulevard except for a walk. Yeah. Well, a lot of people out that way, Mother. And a man's got to live someplace. Well, if he's wise, he'll live where he's able to pay for it. Besides, you haven't got any furniture for a house. Unless you don't mind sitting on the floor. The matter of furniture nowadays, little mother, is a very inconsequential item. It still costs money, don't it? Money, money. That's something that never worries me. I know, but it worries me. Yeah. How are you going to buy furniture when you haven't got any money to even buy a house? Uh, don't fret, Mater. There's things in the wind. Things in the wind. Well, there ought to be. There's plenty of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, plenty of what, mother? Plenty of wind. Yeah. Well, right there with the old sense of humor, eh? <laughs> well, I guess I'll mooch along. Yes, mooch. Oh, say, if Amy calls, tell her I got the loan to Harry Albright's car. Fred Myers and I will meet her in front of the Rivoli at eight bells. I suppose you mean eight o'clock, don't you? Give the lady a cigar, Professor. Well, cheerio, Mrs. Whistler. Who? Mrs. Whistler. Man's dream of an ideal mother. Oh, shut up, you fool. Go on, mooch. Yeah. Cheerio, gal. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. So, Hello, Aubrey. Well, well, Jojo the dog face boy. How's the lad? Uh, oh, I'm okay, fine. What's the matter, Joe? You look excited. Well, I am, in a way. Look, Aubrey, can you keep your mouth shut about something? You can trust me, Jose. Sphinx Piper, my friends call me. What? Sphinx, Sphinx. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, Joe, what's the big secret? Well... I sold it. Sold it? Sold what? My invention, the rust preventative. No. Yeah. I was down at the Miller Grant office all day. I went over the whole thing with him, and we're going to tie it all up Monday morning. Nice work, Mr. Joseph. I hope you got yourself a good slice of the old moolah. I think it's all right. They're going to give me $50,000 for it. Fifty thousand. Uh, well, not bad. Not bad. Uh, first offer, I suppose. First and last. I'm grabbing it. Don't be a sucker, Joe. Give him the old hard-to-get treatment. They'll come through it twice that way. Oh, no. This is too good to fool around with. Anyway, I'm satisfied. You know, we can do a lot with that money. We certainly can. I was talking about the family. Oh, the family. Yes, of course. That's what I meant. <laughs> but I still think you could get more, Joe. What you need is somebody to go in there and talk to those guys. Somebody oh, to... Cut it out, will you? I'm satisfied. I'm sorry I mentioned it to you at all. Hey, Aubrey, what do you say? Uh, right there, Fred. Well, best of luck, Joe, my boy. Don't forget now. Don't say anything about it. Mum's the word, Joe. Mum's the word. Hey, Aubrey, I thought you said you knew how to drive. What's the matter, Fred? We're getting there, aren't we? Yeah, but I hate to think what Harry's car's going to be like. Don't you worry about the car, Fred. Everything's under control. Yeah, so I hear. Uh, got a slipping clutch, that's what it is. Hey, that's a red light. You better stop. Huh? Oh, boy, Aubrey. You're about the world's worst. I think I'd better get out and walk. Oh, we'll be there any minute. Just let that little old light give me the go-ahead, Fred, and we'll be zipping on our way. Uh, here we go. Hey, watch. What's the matter? Look out for that car. Look out. Look huh? out. Huh? Oh. Oh. 
Did you see that guy? He cut right in front of me. Listen, Aubrey, that was a police car. A what? A police car. You slammed right into a police car. All right, all right. Keep moving there. Move along. Hey, you. Oh, good evening, officer. Uh, had a little brush here. And nothing serious, I hope, eh? Oh, no, no. You just knocked three of our wheels off, that's all. I'd like to take a sock at that dope. Where is he? Now, take it easy, Mike. You go along and have that arm fixed. I'll take care of this fellow. Go along now. All right, but you better report about the car. Don't worry, Mike. Uh, did that other gendarme get hurt? Oh, no, I think it's just a little matter of a broken arm. Nothing serious, as you say. A broken arm? Well, how did that happen? I'm not sure, but I think he was waving to a friend. He threw it out of joint. <laughs> Very good. All right, let's see your license. Uh, license? Uh, license. Oh, you mean my driver's license. You know what I mean. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, let me see now. Uh, that's not it. Uh, that's not it. Oh, uh, my draft card. 4PH. PH? Positively hopeless. <laughs> they ain't kidding either. Yeah. You got me that time. Now, let's see. Come uh, on, come on. Give me your license. Uh, well, officer, I'll tell you the truth. You beat me to it by three days. What are you talking about? Well, I've been meaning to get a license for some time. As a matter of fact, I was going down there for one next Tuesday. I... Just a minute. Am I hearing things? Are you trying to tell me that you don't have a license? <laughs> you got me again, officer. Now, I've got you, all right. Get out of that car. Uh, no, wait I can't understand it. I waited at the movies for over an hour. If he wasn't going to come, he would have called here, wouldn't he? Don't ask me what he'd do. I'm beginning to get worried. He says you've got to get out of that place you're in. Yes, yes, that's what I was doing today, looking around for something. Did you see anything? Oh, I saw a couple of places that were fair, but they want too much money. You're not really looking for a house, are you, Amy? Yes, if I can find one. Aubrey says he will not live in rooms any longer, and he doesn't want to pay rent. He wants to buy. Amy, I thought you had a little sense, but you're nearly as bad as him. You talk awfully silly, Mother. You'd think everybody that was married was living out in the street. Well, that's where a good many of them would be living, Amy, only that somebody belonging to them is giving them a hand. You're everlasting borrowing as it is. What? Well, always pay it back, don't I? You do when you get it, but that's not the point, Amy. It's that what you get one week don't last you till the next. Oh, Mother, let me alone. If you are trying to make me say I'm sorry I married Aubrey, well, I'm not. I'm glad I married him, and I wouldn't change him for anyone else I ever met in my life. So there. All right, Amy, but someday that man's going to bring trouble on us. I can feel it in my bones. He won't bring trouble. And if he does, it'll be between him and me. You don't have to worry. All right, all right, Amy. Is that you, Joe? It's me, Ma. Oh, hello, Clara. What you doing here? Well, I, I don't know. Isn't Frank here? You're Frank? He called up the house and said I'd better get right over here. It was something about Aubrey. What about Aubrey? Well, I don't know. I couldn't understand what he was saying. Oh, I hear you moving, Amy. Yes, we are. We want a house. A house? Oh, Amy, if you can't pay your rent where you are, how do you expect to pay more? How do you know I'm not able to pay my rent where I am? Now, don't you start a fight, Amy. Oh, but I'd just like to know what business it is of hers, whether I can pay my rent or not. Nobody's asking her to pay it. Oh, no? Well, your husband's been to Frank Highland twice already to pay it. What? That's a lie. It is not. He's asked him twice and got it, too. Till I put a stop to it. Mama, make her take that back. I won't. It's true. Now, you hush up, both of you. I guess if Clara says it's true, Amy, she must know. And it just goes to prove what I said. Oh, let me alone. <laughs> I told her. I told her that man would start trouble. Oh. Well, now, who should arrive? Oh, buenas noches, little mother. <laughs> eh, is Amy here? For land's sake, what's happened to you? What's that bandage on your head? Uh, bandage? Oh, yes. Nothing to get upset about. Beginning to rain outside, Mother. Never mind the rain. The rain didn't do that to you. I guess you ran into somebody, didn't you? Uh, don't get excited, Mama. I had just a little misunderstanding on the part of the traffic officer. You don't mean to tell me that you ran into a traffic officer. Uh, control now, little Mother. I assure you there's no occasion for undue solicitation. Uh, good evening, Clara. What happened to your head? Uh, the various trifle, Mrs. Highland. Just a little spray from the windshield. Where's that car you borrowed? Smashed, I guess, ain't it? The car I borrowed, Mother Fisher, is now in the hands of the bandits of the law. The judicial gentlemen who collect fines for motorists. 
by ordering them to go one way and then swearing they told them to go another. Never mind your fancy talk. I want to know who you killed and where's the automobile that someone was fool enough to lend you. The automobile, little mother, is perfectly safe, parked and pasturing in the courtyard of the police station. So you got arrested. Well, I accompanied the officer as far as the station house, yes. And while I was there, I told them a few things about the condition of traffic in this city. I guess they told you a few things, too, didn't they? Uh, repeat the question, please. Oh, shut up. Yes. <laughs> what did they do, fine you? Well, they were all set to find me. But when I got through with them, they didn't have a leg to stand on. So they trumped up a charge of driving an automobile without a license. <gasps> did they take the automobile away from you? Nothing of the sort. They simply complied with the usual procedure in a case of this kind, which is to release the defendant on bond pending the extent of the victim's injuries. So there was somebody injured? Uh, the traffic cop that ran into me. For heaven's sake, couldn't you find anybody but a traffic cop to run into? I didn't run into him, Mother. You don't understand the circumstances of the case. Well, I understand this much. They can give you ten years for a thing like that, and it'd just serve you right if they did, too. Borrowing people's automobiles and knowing no more about running them than I do. No time like the present to learn, Mother. <laughs> well, you have plenty of time from now on, if that officer's seriously injured. Uh, he was faking a broken arm around there when I left. Oh. It's a wonder to me the poor goof wasn't signed on the dotted line. He ran head-on right into me. Did they take the cop to the hospital? Uh, I believe they did. Oh, Aubrey. Aubrey, what happened to you? Well, well, a little woman herself. Hi, Amy. What is it, Aubrey? Nothing in the world, baby. I had a little mix-up on Broad and Erie Avenue. You didn't get hurt, did you? Nothing but a scratch on the medulla obligato. <laughs> Just a little shake-up. He nearly killed a traffic officer. That's how much of a shake-up it was. You didn't, Aubrey, did Certainly you? Certainly not, Amy. Your mother's rave. The man's in the hospital. I don't know what more you want. Is he, Aubrey? You think I'd be here if he was? You wouldn't be here only that someone was fool enough to bail you out instead of letting you stay there where you couldn't be killing people. Are you out on bail, Aubrey? They always bail a man in a case like this, Amy. They got my car on their hands. I just got to call around for it Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. I guess you just got to go down there to a hearing Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock and pay your fine. I guess that's the automobile you've got to call for. How much did they find you, Aubrey? They didn't find me at all. They'll do that Tuesday. Yeah, time will tell that, Mother Fisher. How much bail did they put you under, Aubrey? One thousand berries, Amy. A thousand dollars? What? That's regulation. Little chicken feed for the stool pigeons. Did you say a thousand dollars? That's what I said, Mother Fisher. One thousand trifles. I wouldn't kid you. You wouldn't kid anybody that listened to you for five minutes. And who did you get to go a thousand dollars bail for you? Don't be alarmed, little mother. I saw that the affair was kept strictly within the family. What do you mean? Your other son-in-law was kind enough to come forward. Do you, do you mean my husband? That's the gentleman, Clara, Mr. Francis X. Highland. Oh, 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 ladies, oh, ladies. Don't you think you'd better go to bed? In a minute. I'm thinking, Amy. Is your head hurting you? I'm not thinking that hard. And besides, it's just a couple of little scratches. Aubrey, what do you think they'll do to you down there Tuesday? I don't worry about that, sweetie. Oh, but they're getting awfully strict. What if that traffic cop is hurt bad? Oh, it'll only be a fine for reckless driving, even if they could prove it was reckless driving. Then I can prove it was the officer's fault. Well, they're very likely apologizing to me around there Tuesday morning instead of finding me. Oh, I wouldn't care if they only find you, Aubrey, because I could go back to work until it was paid. You'll never go back to work, kid, while I'm on the boat. I wouldn't mind it, Aubrey. Not while you're my wife, Amy. I'm the provider around here. You don't think they might do anything else to you, do you, Aubrey? Oh, they might try to take away my license. You haven't got a license, have you? That's where I fooled them. <laughs> <laughs> Aubrey... Aubrey, what is it they send them to prison for? If, look, Amy, everything's okay. I've got the whole thing worked out in my mind right now. All I've got to do is pay that little old fine, and I'm as free as the air. Why, it's a cinch. How much will the fine be? Well, I can't tell. Maybe that thousand berries. A thousand dollars? Where will you get a thousand dollars? Now, stop it. Stop it, honey. Look, I'll have that thousand dollars Monday. It's a breeze. A thousand dollars Monday? Sure. How? Uh, look. If a fellow was going to sell something for $10, see, yes. and I knew it was worth at least $20, see, well, if I went to the men who were going to buy it for 10 and I convinced them they ought to pay 20 well, I'd be entitled to a commission now, wouldn't I? At least 2%. 2% of the difference, sign on the dotted line, and I got my 1000 bucks. 
But, Aubrey, that would mean that, that you'd have to sell something for, for $100,000. That's the ticket, Amy. You mean that somebody's selling something for 50000 and that you can get 100000 for it? Amy, it's a cinch. <laughs> Well, what do you say, little lady? Mr. Miller ready to see me yet? Well, let's see now. You're Mr. Piper, aren't you? That's the name, little lady. Just tell him I'm here about Mr. Fisher's invention. Oh, I told him that already, Mr. Piper. Oh, thank you, little lady. I don't know what I'd do without you. Oh, you go on. No, you go on. <laughs> Miss Gray? Uh, yes, Mr. Miller? I'll see Mr. Piper now. Uh, yes, sir. That door over there, Mr. Piper. Oh, thank you, thank you. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. So be... Ah, good morning, Mr. Miller. Morning, come in. Piper's the name, Aubrey Piper. How do you do? Sit down. Thank you, Mr. Miller. I've come to see you about the rust preventative. So I hear. Well, where's Mr. Fisher? He was going to be here at 11 to sign the papers. So I came at 10. The signing of the papers can wait, I think. Oh? Are you an interested party in this deal, Mr. Piper? Well, slightly, yes. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm Mr. Fisher's business advisor. Oh, I see. Well, he's a fortunate young man. Oh, very fortunate. And that's what I like to see, Mr. Miller. A young man getting someplace, pulling himself up by the seat of his pants. Yes, Mr. Miller, it's the American in inventive genius that's put this country where it is today. And I'm here to state that every right-thinking citizen has the duty, no, sir, the privilege, of doing everything in their power to help the growing boy along. Am I right or wrong? Shake it up, brother. Shake it up. Uh, just a moment, please. Yes. Uh, now, now, let's not beat around the bush. I'm a man of a few words, Mr. Miller, and I can see that you are, too. Now, what I like to do is come straight to the point, sign on the dotted line, wrap it up, and take it away. Now, you know what this boy has done? Just one little idea, you say. One simple operation. That's true, Mr. Miller, but we can't pass it off like that. Oh, no. Now, you're a businessman, Mr. Miller. Your time is valuable, and so is mine. So let's settle right down now here. Just what are you talking about? Mr. Fisher's invention. What else? Well, you're a little late. We went all over this with Mr. Fisher last week. We're giving him $50,000 for it this morning. Now, you've hit it, Mr. Miller. Right on the old button. Fifty thousand dollars. A paltry, measly, contemptible... Shame on you, Mr. Miller. What's that? Think of it. Put yourself in this boy's place. Fifty thousand dollars is a very fair price. Not for genius, Mr. Miller. Genius is priceless. And I'm here to stay... Uh, wait, wait, please. Am I to understand that you'd like to call this deal off? Now, now, Mr. Miller, don't you jump to conclusions. We want you to have this invention, but at a fair price. All right, Mr. Piper, let's have your proposition. Thank you, Mr. Miller. In the first place, we want $100,000 on the line as an advance. Oh, really? A check will do, but cash won't hurt. <clears throat> number two, the Miller Grant Company will have to sell it at their own expense. I see. And number three, we want one half the net on every gallon sold as a royalty. There you are, Mr. Miller. That's our proposition, and a fairer one you couldn't find. Am I right or wrong? Shake it up, brother. Shake it up. Mr. Piper, I'm afraid you're wrong. Yeah. Huh? I said you're wrong. Now listen here. I'll do the talking now. Who do you think you are walking in here trying to bulldoze me out of $50,000? Uh, we made a fair price, and we were ready to stand by it. If... But I don't like the way you do business, Mr. Piper. This... And you can go back and tell Mr. Fisher that he can thank you for this deal falling through. Now, what was that? The deal is off. We won't give you a lead nickel. Now, now, wait. I'm sorry, Mr. Piper. Good morning. But, but, you can't do this. Oh, yes, I can. There were no papers signed, and there won't be any papers signed. I'll get out. Mr. Miller, you're making a terrible mistake. Will you please get out? Now, let's be reasonable, huh? We'll come down a little bit. Make it 75,000. I told you I wouldn't... Make it 60. Get... No. 55. No. 53. No. 52. No. 51. No. You're a hard man, Mr. Miller. <laughs> and just for that, we won't sell it to you at all. We'll take our product elsewhere. And you'll regret this to the end of your days. Just remember, whenever you hear the Fisher-Piper process, that you could have been in on the ground floor and you missed your chance. Good morning, sir. Oh, this is one of my bad days. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Now, here's a question for the women in our audience. If you could make your stockings last far longer just by doing one very easy thing, 
Would you do it? Of course you would. Then listen to this. Recent tests show how to cut down stocking runs over 50%. Yes, a famous laboratory, the United States Testing Company, Incorporated, repeatedly washed rayon stockings different ways, then tested them on an almost human machine, a sort of mechanical leg that strains stockings the way you do in actual wear. Here's what they found. Washing with new, improved Lux cut down runs over 50%. Yes, the Lux stockings tested on the machine didn't go into runs nearly as easily as stockings washed with a strong soap or rubbed with cake soap. They lasted ever so much longer. You see, new improved Lux saves elasticity, so stockings can take extra strain without breaking into runs so easily. And here's what girls find in actual experience. Why, I got over twice the wear from my Lux stockings. Lux cut my runs almost in half. That means a lot now that stockings are so precious. Better stick to Lux and avoid those enemies of stockings. Cake soap rubbing and strong soaps. Uh, one special hint about rayons. They need 24 to 48 hours drying time. Get new improved Lux tomorrow. It's in the same familiar box, and your dealer has it right now. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Now the curtain rises on the third act of the show-off, starring the great Gildersleeve, Una Merkel, and Bula Bondi. <laughs> it's the morning of Aubrey's trial. In the corridor, just off the courtroom, the luckless show-off, Stands cracking his knuckles with nervousness. For the first time in his life, Aubrey is scared. With him is his benefactor, a sad-faced, sad-eyed man, his brother-in-law, Frank Hyland. Now take it easy, Aubrey. Don't try to tell the judge his business. If he finds you, just keep your mouth shut. I'll take care of whatever it costs. Gee, Frank, certainly a swell of you to stick by me like this. Oh, it's, it's all right. If I can ever do anything for you, just dip me off. Yeah, Things certainly been going awful lately. Did, did you hear about Joe? Joe? Uh, no. What's the matter with Joe? He had a deal all set for 50000 for his invention. Went down there yesterday and they wouldn't even see him. Well, what do you know? <laughs> no uh, explanation or anything. No? Whew. Well, just goes to show you. You can't trust those fellows as far as you can throw them. Yeah. Wish I knew what gummed it up. <clears throat> so do I. <clears throat> Aubrey. Oh, hello, Amy. Uh, glad you got here, kid. Hello, Frank. Hello. Well, I'll see you later. I gotta get some coffee. Uh, no refills, Frank. <laughs> see you in court. Well, honey. Aubrey, are you nervous? Nervous? Who, me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Aubrey, don't worry. It'll come out all right. It's not only the trial, Amy. That isn't so much. I got something else on my mind, Amy. I've just discovered I'm a terrible heel. Aubrey! That's right. It's an awful blow to me after all these years. Oh, what are you talking about? Amy, listen. Remember remember that deal I was going to swing? That $100,000 thing? Yes. It didn't go through. Oh, that's all right. I hope Joe feels like that. Joe? Yeah, it was his deal, the invention. I crabbed it for him. Oh, Aubrey! All right, go ahead. Give it to me. I deserve anything I can get. But how did it happen? How? It was all settled. Well, yes, but... I went there to talk for Joe. Oh. <laughs> I, I thought I could bluff him into it, Amy, and instead of that, they bluffed me out. I was only trying to do a good turn, that's all. I guess you can't help it, Aubrey. I guess it's just the way you're built or something. Oh, honey, from now on, it's going to be different. I'm going to be a brand new heel. Uh, man, you wait and see. Oh, well, what are you going to tell Joe? Uh, Joe. Oh, you think I ought to tell him, huh? You've got to tell him. You've got to take your medicine, Aubrey. All right. I'll face him. I'll face him like a man. Joe, I'll say. Joe, my boy. I'd rather face my draft board. Well, when the trial's over, we'll go up to the house, both of us. Yeah, okay, Amy. Of course, that's just assuming that they'll let you out after the trial. Aubrey Piper. Uh, yes, here I am. Who wants me, mister? The state of Pennsylvania. Get in here. Oh, brother. Mm -hmm. 
Here it is. Look, Clara, it's in the papers already. About Aubrey? You'd know it was about Aubrey if they didn't even mention his name. Oh, what's it say? Mad motorist fined $1,000. That's him, all right. I suppose Frank had to pay it, too. Aubrey Piper of 903 Lehigh Avenue was arraigned today before Magistrate Lister to answer to the charges of reckless driving, injuring a traffic officer and operating an automobile without a license. Magistrate Lister heard a plea of leniency and fined the defendant $1,000. Look, look, there's his picture. Aubrey's picture? Oh, carnation and all. I'd like to get my hands on that fool. I'd tell him a thing or two. Disgracing the whole family. Well, here's your chance. Oh, hi, Clarabelle. Come on in. Hello, Amy. Hello. Well, it's all over. The said and done. Sign on the dotted line. Greetings, Mother Fisher. You're looking very beautiful this afternoon. Pretty as a gangster's smile. Yes, sir. Shut up. Huh? <laughs> eh? What's the matter, Mother? What'd they do to him, Amy? Oh, nothing much. I'll tell you what they tried to do. You keep quiet. Nobody wants to hear what you've got to say about it at all. Well, I told them down there what I had to say about it, whether they wanted to hear it or not. I told them plenty. And then they fined you, didn't they? Uh, a little. Yes, they fined you $1,000. It's all right here in the paper. Mad motorist fined $1,000. Is that what they called me? Why, I'll sue them. Let me see that. Ooh, not a bad picture, is it? Oh, give me that paper. What do you want to do? Put it in your scrapbook? Oh, Mama, let's not fight about it. We're in trouble enough right now. Let's forget it. Oh, sure, forget it. Is Joe here, Mama? No, he ain't. Well, Aubrey wants to see him about something when he comes. Then we're going home. I'll go make a cup of tea. Nothing for me, Amy. I couldn't eat a thing. Who asked you to? <laughs> all right, Mother, all right. Is that you, Pa? It's me, Mom. Oh, come in. You've got company. Who is it? Oh, hello, Aubrey. Oh, hi, Joe. How'd you make out today, Aubrey? Well, I'll tell you. They find him. He's lucky he isn't in the hooskow right now. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, Joe, listen, i got to speak to you about something. Not now, Aubrey. I'm pretty busy. Yeah, but it's very important, Joe. What could you have to say that's important? You know who he is, don't you, Joe? He's the mad motorist. You cut it out, Mother. <laughs> what is it, Mom? Right here in the paper, look. Oh, mm. I never thought I'd live to see a thing like this happen. You know, there's something else in tonight's paper, Mom. What? Just cast your eyes on this right here. Well, what is it? Philadelphia youth makes important chemical discovery. Mr. Joseph Fisher of North Philadelphia perfects rust preventative solution. How do you like that? Joe, did they buy that thing from you? $100,000, Mother. They signed for it this afternoon in the lawyer's office. What? what, Joe? Oh, Joe, that's wonderful. Oh, I'll go tell Amy. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, what is all this? Here, read it. Joe, I can't believe it. Let me see that thing. They sent for me to come over there this afternoon about 2 o'clock, and they had their contracts all drawn up and everything. Oh, oh what did you say about $100,000, Joe? Well, that's what they paid for it this afternoon noon on account. Then they're to market it for me for the, from their laboratories and give me half the net. Net? What's the net? Whatever's left after all expenses are paid. But did they give you any of the money, Joe? A hundred thousand dollars, sure. Not in money, though. Oh, not in dollar bills, no. They gave me a check for it. Well, Aubrey, what do you say? Not bad, not bad. I guess we put it over, eh, Jose? Oh, uh, what do you mean, we? Yes, what do you mean, we? Who cut you in on this? Now, now, Mother, you never know. Oh, what... shut up. You know, it was a funny thing, Mom. When I first talked to the Miller Grant people, I was only to get $50,000 advance. Then they called it all off. But today they sent for me and said, okay, you win 100000 And they're getting away with manslaughter at that. Keep still, you. You don't know anything about this at all. I made them think I knew something about it. You made who think? The Miller Grant people. What are you talking about, Aubrey? Do you know? Certainly I know what I'm talking about. I went to see those people yesterday. And what did you do up there? Well, I told them they'd have to double the advance if they wanted to do business with us. And what business was it of yours? Well, I'm Joe's relative, ain't I? Who told you you were? <laughs> Well, he's got to have somebody tend to his business, doesn't he, Mother? He's only a lad. He doesn't need you to tend to his business for him. He tended to his business long before he ever saw you. He never landed $100,000, though, Mother, till he saw me, did he? Well, what did you say to them, Aubrey? Well, Joe, I simply told him I was acting in the capacity of business advisor to you. And that if this discovery of yours was as important as you'd led me to believe it was, they were simply taking advantage of your youth by offering you $50,000 for it. And that I refused to allow you to negotiate further unless they doubled the advance, sold it at their expense, and gave us one half the net sign on the dotted line. Holy smokes. I don't believe it. Well, I, I certainly have to give you credit, Aubrey. That's the way the contract reads. I told it to him, all right, right from the shoulder. Yes, sir. Well, I'll, I'll have to give you a little present of some kind out of this, Aubrey. You'll not give me any present, Jose. Give it to your family. They'll need it more than I will. Joe, 
Joe, is it true what Clara said? Sure it is. Here's the papers. Oh, Joe. But Aubrey gets half the credit. He swung the deal for double the money. Aubrey. Oh, Aubrey, it's wonderful, darling. You're wonderful. Everything's wonderful. <laughs> Nothing at all, Amy. Nothing at all. Uh, do you, uh, do you want some tea, Aubrey? A uh, tea? Yes, I might, Clara. And a sandwich. I'll fix you something, Aubrey. Sure. Anything he wants. Eh, Aubrey? Well, thanks, folks. Can I help, Amy? No, no. You just sit down there, Aubrey, and rest. Rest. Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, Amy, uh, that newspaper there. Just hand me the financial page, will you? Heaven help me from now on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday is the beginning of Boy Scout Week. This year marks the 33rd birthday of scouting in this nation, a third of a century of service. Every Boy Scout is working for his country now, helping to win the war. And tonight we join millions of other Americans in saluting their great work. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward G. Robinson, Gail Patrick, and Laird Krieger in the Maltese Falcon. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve appeared tonight through the courtesy of the Kraft Cheese Company. Beulah Bondi will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Watch on the Rhine, starring Betty Davis. Heard in tonight's play were Paula Winslow as Clara, Jeff Corey as Joe, and Eddie Marr, Norman Field, Leo Cleary, Charles Kane, Arthur Q. Bryan, Ken Christie, Sharon Douglas, and Fred Mackay. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Here's what Betty said. Hasn't Jane got a lot of pep and charm? But here's what Betty thought. That woman gets in my hair. Where does she get all that energy? Do you envy others because they have more pep than you? Maybe your trouble is plain vitamin deficiency. Vims may help you feel better than you ever thought you could. Vims have the six vitamin formula doctors endorse. Three vital minerals also. Get that Vims feeling. It's VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Vims. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.